The World Ender expansion just went live a few days ago and so far, Ranked Ladder is being dominated by Aatrox decks, probably as Riot intended. Rise and Kale have been underwhelming so far, with both champions displaying poor win rates across the board. However, among the large pool of new cards in World Ender, there lies a hidden gem that might be the key to unlocking the next Tier 0 deck. In this video, I will be sharing my guide to Acolyte's Reliquary Swarm, the deck that I used to climb from Diamond to Masters at 80% win rate. This deck feels very broken and unfair to play, and I think it is a candidate for the spot of being the strongest deck in the current meta. Make sure to watch all the way to the end of this video because I will be showcasing all the different spots that you may encounter in your own ladder climb. I didn't make a gameplay trailer for Ruinous Acolyte Swarm because the name and the deck list speaks for itself. This deck wants to swarm the board with Ruinous Acolytes through Acolyte's Reliquary, the new Shuriman landmark from the World Ender expansion. Acolyte's Relic Quarry creates a Ruinous Acolyte every time it is summoned. When it's destroyed, usually through Ruinous Acolyte, it will create a copy of itself in the top 5 cards of the deck. This allows you to draw it again in the following turns. I overlooked this card when I first saw it, but once you play with or against this deck, you will realize that the Ruinous Acolyte buffs snowball out of control very, very fast. This build has 3 main deck copies of Ruinous Acolytes, plus 3 more with Construct of Desolation. Rite of Passages can also summon Acolyte's Reliquary at burst speed, allowing you to further swarm the board with Ruinous Acolytes. The rest of the deck is built around supporting this game plan. Inventive Chemist, Endless Devout, and Drop the Bomb gives you landmarks to destroy for your main deck Ruinous Acolytes. Pokey Stick, Preservarium, and Unraveled Earth are tools to cycle the deck and draw your shuffled copies of Acolyte's Reliquary. You destroy lots of landmarks throughout the game with this deck, and that makes Ziggs level up very easy to achieve. Winning through burn damage with level 2 Ziggs is one of the deck's alternative win conditions. Safety Inspector plays a similar role with level 2 Ziggs. The mulligan for this deck is very straightforward. You want to hard mulligan for Acolyte's Reliquary. This card is priority number 1. If you have Acolyte's Reliquary, also keep Rite of Passage. You can also keep a combination of Inventive Chemist plus Ruinous Acolyte. If you already have a good hand, you can consider keeping other combo pieces and utility cards. Ziggs levels up very quickly if you can set up Acolyte's Relic Quarry on turn 1. Drop the Bomb can help you control the board against other swarm strategies. Rite of Negation can be clutch against big spells like Field Rush and Champion Strength. As always, if you enjoy my content, do not forget to leave a like and a random or non-random comment. Also, please subscribe to help me reach my next milestone of reaching 10,000 subscribers. It's the Acolyte Mirror, so we want a hard mulligan. Hard mulligan for Acolyte's Reliquary. We have dro double drop the bomb, but no Aalok Acolyte's Reliquary. Let's observe if our opponent keeps their hand. Oh, they kept three, ha three cards. We lost. Okay, we have hope now with this Acolyte's Reliquary. But they kept three cards. Surely one of those is Acolyte's Reliquary, right? They're trolling if it's not the case. Let's go for this one. I was considering saving drop the bomb um, to make sure my opponent doesn't put the acolyte, the ruinous acolyte out of range. But then they won't have enough time to do that because if they play another relic quarry, I'll be able to drop the bomb first. Nice, huge, huge that we got that. We also have the Ziggs. The Ziggs is pretty big too. Yeah, they dropped the bomb before I, I was able to summon the Reliquary. Probably the better play was to use this. Yeah, that would have been better. Would have been better to get Acolyte at burst speed than get out of range. 
That definitely was the play. But the fact that we have the Ziggs, it's pretty good for us. Are we okay taking this damage? I wish I didn't have to, but it is what it is. So now we're going out of range. Let's do this now. Level up our zigs. We have the zigs advantage. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have zigs. What is the play? If they have another one, they're going to 5 HP. If I attack with Ruin as Acolyte, this one becomes vulnerable to Pokey Stick. That's what I am thinking about. I don't want to be vulnerable to Pokey Stick. If my opponent happens to have another Ruinous Acolyte, I'm in trouble. I need to keep up. I want to play the Ziggs, but at the same time we have to do this. I want to keep up with their acolytes. I'm fine going to a full trade here, by the way. Eh? So we go for the Ziggs now? I just want to make sure I'm keeping up with their acolytes. We got rid of that one. I'm relieved. The Ziggs will win us the game. Both of us will keep clogging our draws. Yeah, the Ziggs is straight up winning us the game. And now we might be able to go out of their range. Or we might just have enough fearsome blockers. I think my opponent definitely should have stunned. Right? They should have stunned, right?
against Aatrox Vein. I think we have a positive win rate as long as we don't break our hand. Speaking of breaking the hand, th these aren't good cards. Okay, nice. The hand is fixed. <laughs> That's all it takes. And we also have the explosive minefield potentially later on to stun an Aatrox. On our attack, oh my god, two of them. That's so good. I don't even care. I don't even care about you. I'm just gonna develop fearsome units. This deck is absolutely broken. I think players just didn't experiment with the Acolyte Reliquary when they were prepping for Worlds, but I think it would have been a very good deck to bring to Worlds. Uh, I'm not gonna attack here because I can easily go out of range of this Steadfast Elkin. Easily. There's no need for me to risk uh, to lose an uh, Ruinous Acolyte here. I'll get better trades next time. Okay. I'm not in a rush to deal damage to face. Okay. The Broadwing doesn't have Challenger yet, but it will be able to pick off one of my Acolytes because of the buff from the Darkened Sphere. Unfortunately. So I just take this damage, probably. I want to grow my Acolytes out of range of their units so that we won't have to worry about losing trades anymore. Now it doesn't matter that these have Fearsome. My Acolytes have 4 health now. I'm not afraid to attack into my opponent anymore. So we just go for Rite of Passage again. be a good good opportunity to stun I guess we have the trade right but I don't think I have to trade away everything I would like to lower the HP of the Broadwing and I think I'm fine staying at 2 HP uh what to do here I think we just pass our opponent loses all the stats they don't have the Aatrox yet. Okay, I have to develop a unit. Otherwise, I'm losing. Let's go for the Devout. My opponent wishes I didn't have this unit, but I do. So, tough luck. Is this a fish fight? If it's a fish fight, things will even be better for me. They might fish fight the Endless Devout. But I can't afford the, the, for this to happen. I don't have enough time to develop a blocker in time for the attack. I have the right of negation here, unfortunately. I want to surprise them with a right of their cane onto the explosive minefield. This will get rid of two fearsome blockers, right? But if we can do this, they might have catch, so this might be better. Yeah, this is a lot better. This gets rid of two fearsome blockers. Why sure? There aren't many good plays for the opponent. So they have to block everything, basically.
A ver. Being at 2 HP makes me nervous. Uh, th that might be enough to for me to lose actually. The challenge, challenge, challenge. I have to develop safety inspector now. If they have another unit, I lose the game. Okay, they don't have another unit, so it's still safer. Yeah, we're still okay. We live at one HP, unless opponent has sharp sight. If I want a sharp side, we lose. No sharp side, okay. They might go for the tumble now. They could honestly tumble, force me to block. But I don't think it makes much of a difference. I'll just sacrifice the Ruinous Acolyte, probably. I want to get the Inspector passed. Got him. We're very close to Masters now. We should be fine into Mono Shurima, I think. Mm. I think I full mulligan here. We have Inventive Chemist and to construct Desolation, but this requires 4 mana and that will be too slow for us. We go for the full mulligan here and try to look for our Acolyte's Reliquary. We found it. Nice. Yeah, we, I, I want to use it as soon as possible because I want to shuffle more uh, Acolytes Reliquary into the deck as soon as possible. And I'm expecting opponent to use Rock Hopper here, so I might use Inventive Chemist first. But they didn't, so we get a free, free Acolyte. I hope we draw it, but if we don't draw it, we could also go for the Inventive Chemist and then generate a ru Ruinous Acolyte through the Construct of Desolation. I probably just go for the open attack here because I'm expecting the Roiling Sands to come soon. And if I develop my Inventive Chemist, it might risk the, it might be risky because I don't want my Ruinous Acolyte to be vulnerable. So I'm going to hold my Inventive Chemist until my opponent uses the Riding Sands. I think if my opponent just passes here, I'm just going to go for Preservarium. Um, this will allow us to be able to draw into our Sanctuary. I, uh, Relic. What's the name of the card? Acolyte's Reliquary. Is Reliquary even a word? It's the first time I've heard of Reliquary. Now, if my opponent goes for Roiling Sands, I'm going to go for um, Inventive Chemist first. We're also setting up the Safety Inspector. We, we have lots of bombs for later on. For what? Wow, they could also get that. You could also get Landmarks from your opponent? I did not know that. Today I learned, I guess. So I don't want them to have a fearsome blocker. I'm just gonna destroy that one. Destiny, your emperor commands. Uh, I don't see any reason for me to not block this one. Yeah, I don't see any reason for me not to block Azir. Stand down. We could go for the Burst Speed Reliquary. 
I like that. That's already 50 damage if my opponent doesn't have a fearsome blocker here. And I think I can even inventive chemist to push for some more damage. Sarah. Yeah, I want to push more damage. Let's do it. Let's make it him sacrifice the champions. So Seraph dies, that's really important because they don't get the Seraph trigger with the Preservarium and the Acolyte's Reliquary. I think we can go for Inspection Pass now. But we could also go for... We, we can just do a Double Reliquary, I think. You just go Double Rerun as Acolyte. Yeah, we probably win this. Easy game. Um, The Inventive Chemist will die. They can't flip the Sundas yet, it has not been advanced. They, don't, they didn't play any rock bears. So. I think I just forced them to block next turn. They probably need quicksand to stop me, and they need to sacrifice their Azir. Uh, I can just do this. So they have two fearsome blockers, but they only have three blockers. Even if they can quicksand my ruinous acolyte, they don't have enough blockers for the third one. I don't want them to be able to flip the Azir suddenly. Things will get dicey. Oh, that's not that's not enough. GG. This deck is broken. It doesn't even require too much skill to pilot. You just jam your ruinous acolytes and you win games. I think Ken and Ezra will be toast to our pressure. Uh, we can keep the inventive chemist and the ruinous acolyte. A little bit risky, but this will show, hopefully show an alternative way to win if you don't draw the Acolyte's Reliquary in the first few turns. I think this is still very winnable. We have the Inventive Chemist into, we, we have the alternative ways to get rid of Acolytes basically. Okay, sure. I want them to use the Mark of the Storm first before I play the Runa's Acolyte. Okay. Now that they have done that, I can use Runa's Acolyte. What's usually their turn 3? Might be an Ezreal? Yeah, let's just push damage here. Take 5 damage. Ready. What? I'm gonna press her Varium and increases my chances of drawing my Acolyte's Reliquary. And then I think I go Inventive Chemist. They can just start marking my acolytes. I have to summon another acolyte to make sure we don't die to cannon. Unleashed energy? Is that good? I have studied every fighting manual. Yeah, we, we just put the acolyte out of range of the mark of the storm now. Now you can kill my inventive chemists. Don't worry about them. 
So they're keeping the mark on my Ruinous Acolyte. Maybe because they have a Kinku Wayfinder and they want to stun it next turn. So I might be incentivized to go for the open attack instead. I have a double Poke Stick. Oh. It's really, those are really good draws. But but if they go Kinku Wayfinder, they will get a fearsome blocker with Kinku Wayfinder. At the same time, they will be able to stun my Ruinous Acolyte. I think this is much better. This gives us flexibility to use Pokey Stick on Cannon if opponent tries to recall him. Kinku Wayfinder is too too risky. Ah. So we just go kill them on our next attack turn. Don't blink or you miss me. Uh let's see if we can draw something here. Drop the bomb is great. Can't we just kill Cannon now? They use a recall spell, we use another Poke Stick. They could save it with twin disciplines, but if they're spending mana that way, I'm pretty happy with that. Ah, sure. Uh let's do this. I have a feeling we'll just win through Ziggs. We might just win through Ziggs' damage. You can fight, show me. Sure. How will opponent deal with Ziggs? Level 2 Ziggs just kills kills them at burst speed. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. They don't know that they're gonna die at burst speed, guys. They don't know. We can just go right of passage into Ruinous Acolyte. And our opponent dies at burst speed. You can mark me all you want. Won't matter. Drop the bomb. Got him. Almost masters, guys. Almost masters. We should be able to farm this, right? Uh, you only keep Inventive Chemist if you have Ruinous Acolyte. Otherwise, you never keep it. And then as usual, hard mulligan for our acolytes reliquary. Come on, people, let's make tomorrow today. So we have Seraph and Victor and one of our eyes. Interesting. I'm gonna play the endless devout first. As much as possible, I want to keep my Zig safe. There's no value in putting him down if he's not leveled up. Opponent's going for the draw, going for the attack. I'm gonna go for the double endless devout. At some point, my opponent has to deal with them, right? With utmost efficiency. You can't just keep ignoring them forever. Genius in action. Analyzing approach. I've never tried this Hi. chemical before.
Ooh, the party starts. Does my opponent have removal for the Acolyte's Reliquary? Fury is funny. I'm down to trade with the victor. After shock, get excited. Double high note. It will be troublesome if Victor gets... Ah, that's fine. We have more coming. It will be troublesome if Victor gets some regeneration. Regeneration is probably the worst. Because if that happens, they can block us. Do they have back alley bar? Quick attack. And now we start the Ziggs train. Let's make them remove Ziggs. They probably use Hex Obliterator or Thermogenic Beam. If they summon a unit, they, the Ziggs damages them. If they don't do anything, Ziggs damages them. They're gonna go for a stun. Reduce her hex score upgrade, maybe you roll lifesteal. Yes, of course. Humankind must realize its full potential. Please don't roll lifesteal and I am happy. You have to block. And now they're in trouble. If they play units, Railing Sands will kill them. They have to kill the Ziggs before doing anything. I want to hide the pokey stick as much as possible. So damned if they do, damned if they don't. Yeah, they lose here. I have no idea why they're playing Rise. They're just making the deck worse. 